Good day. Amen. I greet you in the wonderful name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The one who possesses all power. Amen. We have come. We heard this morning and as we sung this far by faith. We have come because of an invitation to covenant, to follow to persevere as we are sanctified by Jesus Christ. Amen. Sanctification is the work of the Holy Spirit. Christ prepared the way and he invites us to follow. But even as we have come from various parts of this beautiful country, we meet together today as a remember one whose heart was strangely warmed. One who experienced the power of the risen Christ. It was like a fire shot up within his bones. And he could not stay silent. He had to move. Uh, and so as we share in this word today. Not necessarily a textual sermon. But looking at come. Covenant to follow. Persevere with us as we are sanctified. We heard earlier, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. We are told that on Aldersgate Street, as John Wesley attended this meeting, a little reluctantly, the time was specified at about quarter to nine. He felt his heart strangely warmed. He felt as if he was part of that great cloud of witness, not in the sense of death, but possessing the power of God, which propelled him into action. Like that city that is set on a hill, like that lamp that is placed on the lampstand, to give light to all. This led to him being so bold to declare the word of God that even in his quiet setting, in the place of worship where there were some discrimination taking place, they even threw him out because of the approach that he was taking. Since his heart was strangely warm, since he became like that city that is set on a hill, since he received that passion for the things of God, he set out following God, preaching the word even from the tombstone and the, the graves in the churchyard, proclaiming the word from places which you might refer to as unusual, but because of that passion, because of that fire, because he experienced God's sanctification, that he was no longer timid, he was no longer afraid, but he was willing and ready to step out. So we have come together this day. We have come to covenant with God. We have come because of a desire to follow our Lord Jesus Christ. And we are determined that we will persevere, come what may, because our aim, our goal is to be sanctified by the Spirit of God. So let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, fall afresh on us as we humbly wait upon you for your word. Your word that lamp at our feet 
and that light for our path. So Lord, remove every distraction. Remove every obstacle we ask. That your word may come to us with your divine power. Bringing about the change. The transformation that is needed. So we ask that the words of my mouth. And the meditation of our hearts. May be found acceptable in your sight. O Lord our strength. And our redeemer. Amen. When we think of covenant. We think of an agreement. A contract, a plan, a deal, an arrangement. When we make a plan, especially when it involves others, their sides, a contract, I have to do this, you have to do that. When you make a deal, a bargain, I must hold up my end and you hold up your end. If someone breaks that deal or that covenant, that agreement, then it becomes null and void. It's no longer good. Covenant, agreement, plan, deal, whatever you want to make, put it, arrangement, all can be linked to that covenant. To follow, come, follow me, not me, Jesus Christ. As he says, follow and I will make you fishers of men. I recently returned from South Korea and the person that hosted us did not know too much English, but the word follow was very clear and very much a part of his vocabulary. So whenever it was time for us to do something, he would simply say, stand up, follow me. <laughs> and all of us, all the bishops of the Caribbean and some of the leaders from the UMC, all we did was to get up and follow. Jesus invites us today to follow him. Do. Don't follow me. Follow Jesus. You can't go wrong there, right? Because as human beings, we make mistakes from time to time. But the God whom we serve is perfect. He knows the plans that has been laid out for each and every one of us. So we are invited to follow Jesus Christ. So we covenant by making that agreement with him. And as good Methodists, every first Sunday in January, we make our covenant with God. I am no longer my own. Put me to what thou will. Rank me with whom thou will. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. Let me be stand aside for you or used by you. Empty me. Or fill me, impoverish me, or enrich. You see, I know it more than me. Covenant. So we covenant and we desire to follow. Now, when we are following, whatever it is, when you make a plan for your life, obstacles often come our way. And there are times when you feel like giving up. There are times when you want to throw in the towel. But you must press on in order to get to your goal. We call it perseverance. Perseverance. You must persevere. You must press on. We don't turn away at the first sign of danger. We seek the Lord for him to give him the wisdom that is necessary to counter the situations that we may face from time to time. When we persevere, we are strengthened. Because brothers and sisters, our trials come, we are told to make us strong. We, are, we, we, we discover what we are made of when we go through trials and tribulations. You only know how fast a car can go if you give it. If you give it gas. Not brakes. If you give it gas, you will know how fast it can go. You will know its maneuvering capabilities only if you put it to the test. 
You know how strong you are in God when the enemy begins to send his attacks. For we know that he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But praise God that Christ came that we might have life and that more abundantly. So when the trials come, just hold on, my brothers and sisters. When the temptations come, just hold on. Hold on because you are not alone. He says, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. So in order for us to accomplish that goal, we must persevere. We are told that as Christians, challenges come our way. But we should not give up. Paul says, We persevere, produces endurance, sorry, character, character hope, and hope does not disappoint us. As we journey on, when we go through these times of testing, it is leading us somewhere. We know the proverb that there is always a light at the end of the tunnel. But you can't stop in the tunnel or you will not see the light. You have to press on. You have to persevere. So we have come. We have come. We have come to covenant. We have come to follow. We will persevere. Because we desire to be sanctified. The road to sanctification begins with us recognizing who we are, where we are, and acknowledging where God wants us to be. Amen. We think of the fact that he gave his life for us because he wants us to move from a state of death to a state of righteousness. He wants us to move from a state of sin to a state of purity, holiness. Sanctification is to be set right by God when we are set apart by him for his service to be purified, to be made holy and righteous unto him. Brothers and sisters, we are told that just as he chose us in Christ before the foundations of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love, he destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to his good pleasure and will. God has a purpose for each and every one of us. And as we seek to covenant, follow, and persevere, this will lead us to that sanctification where we may experience, in the true sense of the word, that which God has in store for us. Matthew gives us a hint when he declares, you are the salt of the earth. Hello. You are the light of the world. We know that light dispels darkness. We know that salt preserves, salt heals, salt avoids corruption. We know that when Christ came and he poured out his spirit upon us, sin no longer had dominion. We know that when he offered forgiveness, that the enemy was defeated from the cross when he declared it is finished. And so as we see ourselves as salt and light, that can only become a reality in the, as we live from day to day if we are living the sanctified life. The sanctified life is one that is pure and holy unto God. One in which we experience his presence daily one in which we allow him to lead us on so we move not in our strength but in the strength which the lord god supplies this city that is set on a hill where one cannot but see god's goodness where one cannot but experience the radiance of christ there are some people you, you just can't miss them there is this glow about them. There is this love that just exudes from them. It speaks of the presence of Jesus Christ. 
We know that the fruit of the Spirit is joy, love, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, generosity, self-control. Persons who just, it comes naturally without effort. Why are you like this? Like magnet. Why are you so joyful? I've got the Lord and that's enough. Because he has destined us to experience this love. He has destined us, my brothers and sisters, to experience in this life, not just in the life to come, but right here and right now. That is God's plan for each and every one of us. As we are told in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7, in him, we have redemption to his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace, and he lavished on us with all wisdom and insight. It is God's desire, my brothers and sisters, that each and every one of us experiences redemption through the blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary. Just forgiving our trespasses. This is the act that leads us to experience the true sanctification. But we must be willing and ready to covenant with him. We must be willing and ready to follow as he leads. We must be willing to persevere when the obstacles come our way. Because it is God's desire that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. All should come to experience his divine love, even as we live from day to day.